and I am going to turn on my live streaming tools. Sure. Okay. Uh, do you see it saying live? I do not see it saying live. I see it saying recording. Okay. There was a short flash. It said preparing live, but I wasn't sure if we were actually live or not. Um, this says uh, Zoom. And it has an arrow pointing to live, preparing to live stream the meeting. But I am not sure if it's actually going to do this because it usually doesn't take that long. Huh. Ah. Boo. Well, okay. <laughs> it looked like it stopped. So um, I'm going to stop doing that. And I am just going to stream to Facebook. And I can make it uh, appear live after we finish. Okay. So let me know when you see something that says live on Facebook. Let's see. Go live. <laughs> there we go. Hooray. So that means it's working. <laughs> that always makes me happy. Um, uh, I like to use one stream live, but uh, like I said earlier, I've been having a lot of uh, tech issues. <laughs> you and me so, both. Uh, the so the tech demons about. are uh, hard at work. <laughs> so um, when I can't use uh, one stream live, the good thing about uh, streaming in. Yeah. Yep. I have streamed to both. Yeah. It, it would be so great if they let me choose both, you know, instead of making me go to the custom streaming, but uh, right. maybe later. <laughs> Hopefully, knock on wood. <laughs> my, my desk is glass. <laughs> <laughs> Sheet rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I've, I've got the bookcase here. That's definitely wood, but my desk is metal. <laughs> Not quite the same effect. I understand. <laughs> so, um, Stephen, would you tell us how you got into um, virtual events, virtual summits, conferences? Sure. Well, the first time I did a summit was actually several years ago, and I was just starting out in the coaching world, and I didn't know enough <laughs> to not do what I intended to do. And so I put together a summit with about 15 people. And from when I started the process to when I actually published the, the summit was about, it was less than a month, which was an insane amount of work that I had to do in order to get all that done in, in that short of time. Uh, like I said, I didn't know enough to to kind of pace myself or to, to figure out how to get things set up so that it, it didn't feel like it was taking over my life. Um, <laughs> when you said 15 people, did you uh, mean like 15 speakers or 15 attendees? 15 no, speakers. 15 speakers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and we actually did it over, what was that service called? Um, gee, it was back when, before Zoom, it was when we were Sorry? doing some kind of telephone type thing. I mean, it wasn't a telephone, but it was definitely more of a telesummit than a virtual summit. Was it anyway, fun? so it, it was a good learning experience. Then this year, I was, well, actually end of last year, I, I met someone and we were having a good conversation and we said, well, what if we do a summit together? I'm like, okay. And so we, worked on it for the first few months of 2021, uh, pulled it off. We had the Courage to Shine Summit back in the beginning of April, and that worked out well, but my co-host didn't want to do another one. She was like one and done, <laughs> and so I actually partnered with the person who was doing the facilitation of that first summit, and we did the Sing Your Heart Song Summit in the end, at the end of July. And uh, now nice. we're working on doing the next version. So. Oh, I'm yeah. glad you didn't give up. <laughs> so uh, 
<laughs> what was daunting about all the tasks? What did you uh, learn that you uh, know better now? Well, one, especially just starting out and without using any kind of service, I know there are telesummit or virtual summit services that, that do a lot of the back end stuff. But one, I was watching my pocketbook, and two, I, I, in my previous life, in other words, earlier in my career, I was a programmer. So I'm pretty comfortable with technology. It's not what I want to be doing. It's one of the reasons I don't do it anymore. But um, but I have the skills to to do that kind of thing. So I put it all together, built the website, built the, actually I already had the website, but built the pages and put together all the material and everything. There's just a lot of stuff that goes on in the back end. Not only is the summit, you know, and our summit, that the last summit was basically two and a half days. We had 21, 22 presenters on the summit. And you know, just kind of wrangling everybody together and getting their information, and uh, and then doing the presentations. And the way that we formatted this one, it wasn't an interview format; it was a presentation format. So everybody did kind of a little their own mini webinar and shared their information. And it was really cool and had some good experiences. The thing that I learned am learning from doing these summits, though, is that you know, every single summit is a learning opportunity and they get, with each attempt, it gets better and I get more comfortable doing all the things that I need to be doing. with it. And the other thing that I'm really clear on for me is that it really helps to have a co-host rather than trying to do it all myself because it, one, the energy of the event is just so much better and there's just, a, a richer experience. Plus, there's, it's nice to have someone that we can cry on each other's shoulders when things are going not going the well as we would, as we would like them to be. Kind of like what we did at the beginning of our conversation today, with talking about the the technical challenges that we're facing today. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, when you had your event, you uh, you partnered with someone and you had a facilitator. Um, how did you know you had a good partner and how did you uh, find your facilitator together? <laughs> I, I didn't know whether I had a good partner or not. And in fact, one of the things, one of the reasons that I didn't do another summit with my first partner was that while we have very similar messages and intents, our work styles are very different. And it, and that wasn't there was nothing bad. It, I think we created something that was really cool, but it was just not a great working relationship. And we didn't know because because we had never really worked before to, with each okay. other. And, you know, it's kind of, you live and learn. You, <laughs> you work together. And I don't, and honestly, I don't know how I would have tested that known how that would have been without actually doing it. Yeah. But it, so my personal takeaway from that is just be willing to to do things, see how, if they're working and and continue to try new people. You know, find those people who really work with you and continue to find partners who not only have similar values but also have similar work styles so yeah. that you can move forward and you know, another thing that has shown up is just different communication styles. You know, I like to, I like to, I'm not always great at it, but I like to be quick in responding to people's, uh, you know, reaching out to me and communications to me. And sometimes that works really well. And other times I'm on vacation and across the country and, you know, it doesn't flow as smoothly. Um, and that's one of the things that I'm learning with the people that I'm working with on the summit. And that's one of the things that's really true about summits in general is that unless you're doing like a workshop type of summit where it's just you and you know the participants, when you have 20 people that you're working with, it can be really, there's a lot of communication that needs to happen for that to 
be pulled off and, and to, for everybody to come together and be on the same page. And even with the last summit, we had a handful of people, three to five people that within the last few days, right before we were going live on the summit, were like, um, I just had a personal thing come up and I can't be on the summit. So I had to scramble around to find people to fill those holes. Wow. <laughs> Fortunately, I was able to get them all, almost all of them. One of the, the slots we didn't get a, someone to fill, but it actually turned out really well because my co-host is a, a laughter yoga instructor. Mm -hmm. And so we just spent the first, that session that we, that we weren't able to get filled doing some laughter yoga and some meditation and so forth. So it was, it was actually one of the best part in my experience, one of the best parts of the whole event that wouldn't have happened if everything had worked out as we had planned. Nice resourcefulness. <laughs> yeah, you got to think fast on your feet in order to make all these things work. Yeah, like not just tech issues, things could come up in life and what are you going to do about it? And you thought right. fast and you got it done. <laughs> yeah, and, and it wasn't, I mean, most of what was going on when the people called, they were like deaths in the family and, you know, things like that. They were like, wow, okay. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. And I totally understand. I want you to be there for your family. And yeah, I, I need to find someone to fill in your slot, but I also understand. And let's just move forward, see what we can do, make it work out. Yeah. So when you um, host an event, do you write down uh, what you like and what you don't like about it as you go? Or how do you keep up with all of that? I do. One of the practices that we've done is, and actually it, was, it started out even before we hosted the first event this year, is we created a Google Drive folder where we kept and shared our information and also where we recorded, first of all, before it ever happened, where we recorded our expectations as to what we would like to see happen. And then after the event, what are the things that we would have done differently in order to make it an even better event? And so, that that has been helpful and now yeah. that you asked that i'm thinking i want to go revisit that to, for the last event because not the you have the event you have all this but you have all the time that that leads up to that event getting all the people lined up doing all the back end stuff and then you have after the event when you're kind of tying up loose ends and, and recording your thoughts and experiences and so forth. And you really need to not just account for on the schedule, the, the event itself, but everything leading up to that event and then give yourself a, a bit of time on the other side in order to, to keep track of those things that worked well and that didn't yeah. work as well as you would like. Like your uh, pre-summit game plan, like got to go over it before uh, it's game day. And then you have the uh, after summit debrief, like watching the uh, replays, what could have been done better? What would you have liked to see differently? Things like that. Right. Exactly. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it is definitely a process and it's, it's, there's both a science and an art to it. I definitely believe you. <laughs> <laughs> So um, when, when you're hosting these events, I'm assuming that you like live events instead of pre-recorded or do you do both? I have generally done live events. In fact, I don't think I have done any recorded. So yeah, it's, all, it's always been live. What is it about <laughs> live that you like? I really like the engagement, you know, the, the back and forth and, and, and having, and that's not only with the presenters, but it's also with the audience and it just, I, I like the, the feel of it. There are times though, when it's like, I really wish I, this was recorded and I would have just been, you know, let it run when it runs. <laughs> so I, I can appreciate why people do the pre-recorded. And in fact, it's with my the podcast that I'm developing. I'm I have been doing it live, and I'm but I'm thinking that I want to just 
I might switch that up to do pre-recorded just to allow <laughs> for like people that, that don't, whose schedules don't jive with mine and they're yeah. not able to, to meet when I normally do the, the live events. And it, with doing pre-recorded, it would allow some greater flexibility with the scheduling. So. Yeah. <laughs> so um, with your uh, past summits that you've done, have you uh, thought about using those recordings as part of your podcast? I have thought about that, yes. I haven't done it yet, but oh. <laughs> but yes. No, but I've, I have them all hosted on, well, not they're not... I have them all on YouTube now. In fact, what I did during the summit was that I, just like we're streaming live on Facebook right now, I streamed it live onto YouTube so that we can have access to it after the fact. Okay. And part of the intention of that was continuing to have the value of what was presented at that summit because what was shared there, you know, has a lifetime value to both me as a as a creator of the summit but also of the presenters and the audience members All right. so it's so, nice uh, to have access to that it is um got to make sure though that you uh have your recordings stored somewhere else because once they're on youtube they're youtubes mm. <laughs> I'm not sure if you were aware of that, but it's always nice to have it somewhere else because if YouTube decides I'm going to take them or take them away, then that's that. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. How do you deal with that? Where do you store well, yours? I, um, mine are still in Zoom. They're on my desktop. They're on uh, iDrive and they're on Google Drive. So just in okay. case. I'll, I'll have them. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you're, you've got some nice redundancy of backup there that so yeah. you're, you're covered. Yeah. Oh, and I also send uh, the recording to the speakers. So just in case everything goes away, I, there's still the possibility <laughs> I can call the speaker. It's like, you still have that recording. <laughs> How do you deal with the, the file size and send, doing that? Do you compress the files or those can I get don't. pretty big? Yes, they are. You know, and I hadn't thought about that until you said it, but I don't do anything like that. Um, I have like, um, I think it's three terabytes in um, ice drive and air, like once a year, Google Drive will ask me for $20 and I can keep using it. Nice. So um, that's a, a good investment. So you yeah. have that. Like I am a really big fan of um, AppSumo and I get a lot of good uh, lifetime deals from them. And recently they had um, Vadu TV player and they offered, um, I think it's five terabytes of storage. Wow. I was like, yeah. But at the same time, I still don't want to let anybody else use it, you know, just in case. <laughs> just in case <laughs> I need all of that. <laughs> Right. Well, five terabytes, that's quite a bit of memory. Yeah. <laughs> it is great for a lifetime deal. Absolutely. Wow. Good deal. So um, you posted two summits. You got one summit coming up this year. How often uh, do you think you will um, run a summit a year? My intention is to be doing it quarterly. I like that. <laughs> that we're not quite up to that yet, but it's that's the direction that I'm intending on going. It's doing it quarterly just to, I think that's a, a good frequency without being too frequent. Yeah. <clears throat> I know some people who have, who are doing lots more summits than I am, but they also seem to have a whole lot more energy than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, somebody should host an event about having more energy while hosting an event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Have How you? Do you uh, it? <clears throat> yeah, that that would be a great summit right there. That's something for you to think about. <laughs> uh, 
I uh, had a guest on the show, uh, Steve Erickson. He um, has a uh, event Raptor and he hosts events like every two months, maybe once a month. And he has lots of energy. I mean, he even comes to our mastermind and hangs out with us. I'm like, how are you doing this? <laughs> and he told me that he was on a, a really strict keto diet and um, he makes sure he gets his rest and mm. he drinks lots of water. And I'm like, all of that will give you energy. And I'm like, I'm not sure if I believe you, but I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know my, <clears throat> excuse me, my health coach has got so much energy and she's almost 10 years older than I am. <laughs> But she's really into, you know, sleep and diet and exercise and all that and, you know, keeping a really clean lifestyle. And it seems to be working for her. She's got tons of energy. Yeah. And I've got pretty good energy. It's just <clears throat> there's like the, the physical energy of doing all that stuff. But there's also the emotional and the mental energy that comes from doing that. And yeah. The physical energy is easier for me than it is the emotional and the, the mental energy. So it's, it is finding uh, ways to manage that as well. And for things like that, I, I'm really big into yoga and meditation and tapping and all that type of thing in order to be doing, be at my best so that I can do my best. That's good. Do you keep a jar of greatness? A jar of greatness. I don't know yeah. what that is. It's like every time you do something good, you write it down and you put it in the jar and you watch the jar build. And when okay. your jar is full, you um, you empty it by reading those notes. Really? Wow. It's That's the a cool idea. Of the build. <laughs> I do not do that. Um, I'm very well might start doing that. <laughs> Well, if you if you write things down and you said you write the things down about your events, that should work too. Like I, yeah. I do it on the calendar. Yeah, no, I do. So I do lots of journaling. I do morning pages. I do. Um, I have a daily checklist that I. It's a spreadsheet that kind of tracks all the different things that I I do. Um, so there's lots of that type of thing. And I like having access to it like that because it, it keeps just like you're talking about with the, the the video files. It's nice to have a record that I can go back in and look at. But there's also something that's really nice about um, having something more tangible. So one of the things that I do do is have this little journal thing that that I use, where it just it's all written, handwritten in there. So it gives it a nice, both tangible as well as a record of, of how things are going. So I can go back and look at that. There's <laughs> magic in writing. There is. <laughs> so uh, how do you uh, pick your speakers for your events? Is that one of the first things you do or what, what's, wait, let me back up. What's one of the first thing you do when you host an event? So one of the things that, and this flows through not just the events, but also pretty much everything that I do is, you know, getting really clear on what my intent is. What am I trying to accomplish? How, how would I like, the way that I phrase it is, how would I like to make the world a brighter place? And my focus, my work is all about helping people to share their stories and to you know, help other people realize they're not alone in the, in the struggles that they're fighting. So I look for people who are able to speak to the struggles that they've overcome and how they've come to, one of the ways that I phrase it is how they've gone from a painful moment to a profitable outcome. <clears throat> and so I'm looking for, I look for people that, that fit that parameter, characteristic. I also really look for people who speak around the, the topic of voice and voice being how we express ourselves, how we bring our, our divine gifts out into the world and make the world a, a brighter place. So 
um, that's what I do first is, is look at those intents. Um, and then it's a matter of looking for those people that, that can fit well within that paradigm and, and talk to that. I would like to have that as a checklist, please. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's very insightful. Yeah. Might make a good lead magnet for you. <laughs> okay. Well, that's definitely something to think about. It is, I, part of what motivates me is that as I said earlier, I was a programmer. I was technically in a corporate accountant, but my strength was in doing the programming. So I did lots of reports and lots of programming and so forth. Um, and while I was good at that, it did not feed my soul at all. In fact, it totally sucked my soul dry. Oh. And, and so when I left that environment, got my pink slip of opportunity, as I describe it, um, <laughs> and did my cartwheels out the door, I uh, was determined that my next uh, stage of life was going to be a lot more joyful and a lot more authentic and true to who I am. And so what I've found since is that by getting clear on who I am, what my values are, what it is that I'm, I'm trying to do in the world, and then to align everything around that, then things just work better. And I'm happier. The people I work with are happier. My clients and audience are happier. But because we're not just focused on the technical aspects of it, which are important, as we've <laughs> talked about today with the technical frustrations that, that we deal with, um, but there's a lot more to life than just, you know, ticking the boxes and crossing the, the T's and dotting the I's. But, you know, we, we need to find work that really satisfies and fulfills us. How did you know when you were finally clear on your goals? How did I know when I was falling clear on my goals? Yeah, when you're finally clear, like um, things just made sense for you. And how long did it take for you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, well, it's been a little by little. So it, I think I had some success earlier on. When I left that environment, the corporate accounting environment, I started to really listen to my creative voices. Um, so like one of the first things I did was do a bunch of paper mache, make some masks and things. Um, but I also really explored a lot of creative expression, started doing some painting and some drawing and eventually did photography and so forth. And that helped me to, to get clear, more clear on, on, on my voice. But it also, uh, again, going back to the writing, writing has always been, a, as always, since I was six years old, been a huge part of my life and helped me to, to navigate and figure out where, I, where I'm going. So that's writing and creative expression and conversations and like we're having right now have been really helpful for me in finding my voice. But another thing that, that helps me to, to know when I'm on track, that I'm going in the right direction is just that, that resonance, that, that sense of satisfaction, fulfillment in what I'm doing, that, you know, when at, the end, when at the end of the day, and it may have been a really difficult day, lots of things on the task, on the, my to-do list, and even some painful moments on that day. But if I can look back and say, well, do I feel good about what I've done today? Do I feel good about who I am and how, how I've shown up today? Have I made the world just a little bit brighter place? And part of that, one of the ideas that I stumbled upon was this idea of 1% incremental improvements, that if you just improve what you're doing by 1% each day, that over the course of a year, you have a dramatic, it's not just 365% better, it's actually 3,800% better. So it's a, because of the beauty of compounding interest. And so if we continue to, to improve and, and head in that direction, and part of that reward being not only the financial reward, but also the, the emotional 
and social and otherwise rewards, then I feel like I'm heading in the, the right direction. But a huge part of that is the emotional reward that I get from doing what I'm doing. I like that. Which uh, is something that I totally disregarded in the first my, part of my career. <laughs> I understand. I like how um, art led you to uh, clarity and a, a relief from uh, your accounting job. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was some creative, most of the times when you're a creative accountant, you get in trouble, so <laughs> <laughs> you run into the Enrons and the WorldComs and the that type of thing where, where the creative accounting is not producing good, positive results, but I think the two can actually work really well together, that, you know, we can have that analytical side that helps us to, to make sense of where we are, but also that creative side that helps us get to someone somewhere even better. You think you'll ever hold an event about accounting or creative <laughs> accounting? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I will ever hold an accounting event. <laughs> right. Although I do sprinkle in accounting into pretty much everything I do. It's, uh, it's just in different language. Like I, I talk about the emotional balance sheet rather than the, you know, in conjunction with the financial balance sheet that, and so, but no, I, although I do oftentimes have accountants and other financial professionals as part of my, the, the present, presenters on my, the shows that I do. So um, I am in that realm because I think, you know, it's not only important to to follow your heart, which I think is incredibly important. In fact, one of the you're oh, I was about to say you're muted. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I must have flashed the wrong. Anyway, um, <laughs> one of the quotes in this gratitude journal yesterday was said, you know, if there's ever a conflict between the heart and the and the mind, always follow the heart. And I totally agree with that, but it also is really important to have the mind and to know whether or not, you know, am I, is my business being profitable? Am I, you know, heading in the direction that I need to be heading or you know, am I mass, amassing too much debt or too much, uh, are my expenses, both my financial expenses, but also my emotional expenses and my social expenses, is my energy being depleted or is it being elevated? And, you know, it, it, I think we always need to be mindful of that energy and that energy shows up in lots of different ways. Yep. I was thinking uh, math, I, I don't like math. I'm dyslexic and sometimes they, it looks funny to me, but uh, math can help you host a good event. Math can mm. help it or yeah, help you know and reach your numbers like knowing what the answer should be before you get started can really help with an event and having Absolutely. an account tell me that I can write off some stuff that I I've added for an event will make it even better. Mm, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Which is why I totally recommend, you know, being, having a good relationship with a good accountant because it can save you an, an awful lot of money. Too often we, we see the, the shiny uh, promise of how much we can make from our events or from the work or whatever, and we discount or disregard the costs that are involved with whatever we're doing. And we need to be mindful of both the, the, the benefits that we are seeking, the rewards that we're seeking, but also the cost of those rewards. Because ultimately, it's the, the difference between those two things that indicate whether we're being profitable or successful or sustainable. Um, yeah. The income always has to exceed the out, outgoes. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> whether that's financial or emotional or social or whatever, that, that we, we're always growing. Yeah, like your emotional can affect your finances, and sometimes your finances can affect your emotions. Absolutely. So 
it, it's best to go through all of this in your uh, pregame show before an posting an event. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the more that you do it and, you know, even if things don't go as well as you would like them to go, um, you know, we, we can always learn something from what we're doing. And even if we have something that doesn't turn out the way we would like it to turn out, if we can just learn from what we're doing so that we can use that to improve the next time we try something. Because, yeah. you know, I imagine there's someone out there somewhere that their very first event was the most incredible thing ever done. But I suspect that far more of us are, you know, learning as we're going. And, you know, the important thing is that we keep going, we keep trying and, and learning from what our mistakes along the way. Yeah. That's why it's very important to keep a journal while you're hosting an event so you can remember what happened and not to do things again or to repeat things. Absolutely. So um, do how do you uh, promote for your events? Do your events have a theme? I know you said you wanted to host them like every three months. So do they build off of each other? I've, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, they're always around a central theme. Uh, I'm honestly, I'm planning. So my last summit was Sing Your Heart Song Summit. And it's all about uh, valuing and finding and delivering your beautiful and powerful voice and doesn't necessarily have anything to do with singing, although it doesn't exclude that either. Um, and my, the one, the next event that I do will be along the same, will be in, in fact being called the same thing. It'll be the Sing Your Heart Song Summit again, because I'm planning for that to, to be kind of part of my brand. And yeah, I don't want to do the same exact, I mean, I could take the same videos that I did from the last event, you know, and replay it all over again. And, uh, you know, I have all the videos for it, but I don't think that would be uh, creating the, the value that I want to be creating. And so I'm, I want to build off of what we've done. Uh, you know, what are the things that, that were on part of that summit that uh, I really want to keep? What are the things that I want to get rid of? What are the things that I want to add on to it? And, and just continually refine it so that it gets better and better. Um, yeah. And I've got a handful of different shows, the different ways that I do things. And so there's a, enough variety that it keeps things interesting. Yeah. Do you charge for your events? Is there a ticket fee? <laughs> there is not a ticket fee. <laughs> I was going to say, if you did, they probably wouldn't appreciate it. You're uh, playing the same videos for free for everyone else if they bought a ticket. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Well, that was actually part of the intent is that I didn't want to want people to, to worry about that. I, I wanted, I see the value. I mean, there's definitely the opportunity for income from doing events like that. That wasn't, isn't the model that I'm operating off of right now. My model is, you know, to use the events as being an asset in their own right and and being more of a social and a benefit and something that i can use if i were to choose and i haven't chosen to to replay them for you know like like you asked earlier about the podcast you know i, I wanted to be able to have that opportunity but i have and just like you said if i had charged people you know vip ticket or, or whatever the act, lifetime access, and then I go out and play those anyway for everybody else. I know I would not feel comfortable about that if I were to have been paid for the the access and then realize afterwards that, well, they're giving them away for free. Why don't I pay for this? <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's some things you could do, like um, you have two conferences now that uh, you could just take clips from. You can put clips on... Um, your podcast and from those um, quotes you take from uh, those uh, conferences, you can talk about it further. Mm, it's like, yeah. this is what I got from that. Uh, this is how I'm going to put this into practice. And you can have guests on both of you guys could listen to the clip and uh, discuss further. Mm, yeah. That's a good idea. Great idea. Hey, I feel helpful now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have lots of tips to, 
this year. So I love events. Events yeah. are fun. That's cool. So, um, since you uh, host free events, do you have sponsors? Not at this point, but that's kind of a cool idea. Yeah, so. I mean, you're giving your time, energy, and emotion to serve people. I think you should be paid for it. Yeah, definitely. That's a good idea. So that's one of the things we will, I'll talk with my co-host with about next week is looking for some sponsors for those events. Yeah. Especially sponsors that are in alignment with who we are and what we're doing. Yeah. Like um, your gratitude journal. Maybe they want to uh, sponsor one of your events. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> One of the people that I really have listened to a lot in the past is Amy Porterfield. And I don't know if you've ever listened to her. Yep. Uh, I like the way that she does both. She'll, you know, this podcast is sponsored by whatever. And it'll actually not be a third party sponsor oftentimes. I mean, she does have third party sponsors, but she also will have it be... And I don't remember what her course's names are, but she'll have one of her, it'll be in conjunction with one of the courses that she's offering. Uh, so List Academy, commercial. I think, or, or course yeah. Academy, like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, it, so that's a possibility too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so um, free event, no sponsors yet. Do you have any upsells? I've... We did honestly for the so the, for the, the Courage to Shine Summit that we did, we did actually have that be a VIP sale uh, tickets. The second one, the, the most recent one, the Senior Heart Song Summit, we did not. Uh, and then as far as upsells, kind of not really. What we've done is actually had people come in and offer their programs. And we, uh, they'll offer their, have a, we did the, have you ever done Wheel of Names? Yeah. <laughs> so the participants will will have access to their programs through the, the Wheel of Names, that type of thing. So kind of a, a lottery system. So there are things that are, people are coming in and, and benefiting from it that way. Uh, one of the things that I, kind of did it wasn't really as well orchestrated as i would hopefully do it in the future as i did have a program the week after i did the last summit and they were through two different channels and so they weren't really well coordinated but i think the next time that i do it i can easily have it go from the summit to the, the training program and have more people have access to it that way. I did offer it as part of the, the Wheel of Names, but it wasn't as synchronized as, as I would hopefully do it in the next iteration. I like the upsell of having a, a coaching program. Um, when you give people, um, when they give you something and you put their uh, stuff attached to the Wheel of Names, that is an in-kind sponsorship. Uh, it's nice and um, it can be very generous of uh, the sponsor to do that, but people charge for that. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to uh, come in front of this audience that I have that uh, aligns with your message, people pay for that because mm. how else are they going to get a chance to uh, get in front of that audience unless you ask them to. Right. Yeah. Good well, thinking. Uh, how much is that worth to them to get in front of their audience to uh, give them a sample of their product? Right. Yeah. That's a good, good point. Yeah. It's like you're in the mall in the food court and there are people with the toothpicks handing out samples. <laughs> <laughs> if the mall wasn't there, like, would people still come take those toothpicks? Because <laughs> like, why are you out in this field with these um, toothpicks? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense, see? <laughs> I just yeah, I, I, I would be less like going through Hickory Farms or something or whatever the current 
version of, I don't even know if they have, still have hickory farms around, but <laughs> I am not a mall hopper. I, it's been a long time since I was last in a mall, but uh, when I was a teenager, we would frequent hickory farms and get every single sample that they offered. But if it was just some guy on the side of the road handing out cheeses and salami on a toothpick, I probably would shy away from them rather than move towards them. Yep. So the mall is providing an audience and they get to rent a space to uh, give out their samples. You're providing an audience and you're giving them a chance to uh, hand out their samples. I just want you to know that you're worth paying for. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that analogy <laughs> yep. it's, it's the only time you're allowed to take food from strangers is when you're in the mall I'm not even sure if malls are still open now but that's the only time <laughs> <laughs> very true unless you're trick-or-treating but um <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then you have all the my mom used to get so anxious about that she'd like go through every single piece of candy and make sure there isn't any slits or anything weird in it this is long before there was you know the stuff that's going on today but <laughs> and we lived in a pretty safe neighborhood but mom got ideas and <laughs> she was yeah. just watching out for our welfare <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I definitely understand that so uh, with your uh, event coming up, um, when is it and what's it going to be about? So the next event, like I said, is probably going to be sometime in either late, August, well, late October or early November. It will be the Senior Heart Song Summit. The intention is to help people to to really find their voice to, to and to value that voice and to share that voice with others so that you know we can all benefit from what their their message my personal mission is to create a million points of light and what i mean by that is that a million instances where people are sharing their story and helping the world be a brighter place you know, because as wonderful as the world can be, it can also be a really dark place at times. And the more we have people sharing their authentic stories saying, you know, I've been through this difficult time and I've come out on the other side and life is just so much better. Uh, you know, it easy, the easier it is for other people to navigate their own dark nights of the soul. <laughs> I think I have the upsell for you. What about... Uh, the people who buy the upsell get to be a part of your launch of your podcast. Okay. So um, like we're on Zoom right now. Um, I have this uh, program called uh, Perfect Recall and Perfect Recall takes the transcripts and you can um, cut it up and make clips out of it or you can put the transcript in an ebook. So okay. you're finding ways to help them get their voice out. Um, through the podcast, if it's uh, like Zoom, you can have it on um, any social channel you want. You have the ebook. You can help them get that ebook on a Kindle or um, Amazon or something like that. Sure. Uh, um, cut up that uh, transcript and make blog posts out of it. It's different ways of getting their voices out and helping you build your uh, podcast. Awesome. And yeah, let them pay you for that because that's yeah. a lot. <laughs> Yeah, well, it definitely is. Having done some transcripts and it's it's nice that we can have things like Otter and you know different services like that 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 automate it. But if anybody's looked at the transcript from Otter, they know <laughs> that, that that is very much raw material that that needs a lot of development for it to actually be something that's useful. Yeah. I, mean, I use perfect recall, but uh it definitely needs a human touch. <laughs> <laughs> so is perfect recall, is that like Otter? Is, are you familiar with Otter? Yeah, except um, I get my clips from um, perfect recall and Otter doesn't uh, let me do that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 
Huh. So with, when I uh, like I, if I take this video and I make clips out of it, um, I can make a video landing pages out of it and I can send that. Um, I can send the viewer to uh, your event. It's like I was talking to Steve about this event It's coming up in October. Go check out. Go check it out. And okay. um, I could have like blog posts to say the same thing. And my call to action could be the same thing. Uh, oh. And uh, like these are. Um, top tips I got while talking with Steve. So excellent. So, well, well, thanks for passing that on. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm saying, when you host your event, that's your upsell. Mm, yeah. Very cool. Well, I'll have to go back and where can I access the your interview with Steve? Uh it is on YouTube. It is on Facebook. Uh, D Live Trivio. I think Twitch takes them down after 24 hours. But uh, yeah, you can find me okay. all over social. <laughs> cool. Excellent. Well, I'll definitely do that. Yeah. He has some very good tips on hosting events while uh, maintaining energy. So yeah. <laughs> cool. Right up my line. So, <laughs> excellent. All right. Well, I won't hold you too long. Let people know where they can reach you so they can find out more about your upcoming event. Sure. So there are two primary places that people can reach me. They can reach me through my Facebook group, which is the Art of Entrepreneurship for Transformational Authors and Speakers. They can also find me on my website, giftsintogold.com. And you'll see my blog there. There's also, a, I do a weekly newsletter and share my events and so forth in both those places. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate you um, coming on despite um, having um, tech trouble. <laughs> you and me both, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we didn't give up. I'm glad we were able to talk. 